Hello everyone. So yesterday we decided, instead of being cooped up in the house all day, we decided to go uh, for a ride, just for fun, to some pretty places we know. And we drove by a few garden centers that we've been meaning to check out. And we got ourselves a little haul. So these are the plants that we got on a few different places. And I wanted to show you the plants tell you why we got them and a few of them we're gonna to have to repot right now so we wanted to show you that as well. The first plant we found was this Oncidium type or Cumbria type as they're called around here and if you've seen one of our recent videos you know that I really really love true red orchids and they're not that easy to find and as soon as I saw this one I knew I had to bring it home. I have no idea of the ID it had one of those ink orchid tags uh, but I looked on their website and this orchid is nowhere to be found. I try to find orchids that are similar to it on the internet, but I just can't seem to find it. So if any of you know what the idea is for this plant, I would be really, really happy to hear it because I hate not having the correct ID for plants. I hate having no ID written on the tag. It just, it's a pet peeve of mine. From that same garden center, I got this little Peperomia pepper spot, I believe. And as I mentioned in the last video, I, I'm really into peperomias right now. I have a bunch of these tiny pots of peperomias, but I am in no way an expert in growing them. Some of them, they're holding on there, but they're growing tinier and tinier leaves, and I don't know if that means I have to repot it or what. So if you have any peperomia tips you can give me, I would also really appreciate it. Also, if you want to see a video about our peperomias, just let me know. This one I'm pretty sure we're going to have to put in a hanging basket at some point because it kind of vines down and it, it will look much better in a basket. But for now, I'm just going to put it on the shelf with the other ones and see if the, the shelf in our office where I keep our peperomias is enough light for them. Because I read that this one has a tendency to get leggy if it doesn't get enough light. On another garden center, we got this Oncidium type orchid. Uh, it was tagged as Oncidium titanium treasure. And I've been noticing these type of Oncidiums on garden centers lately, where it looks like a, a Brasidium type orchid, but it's much smaller. It's like an Oncidium twinkle size plant, and the flowers are slightly smaller too. And I'm honestly all for it. If you can make Oncidiums smaller and more manageable, I don't care that the, the flowers are smaller. And this particular garden center used to have a lot of uh, orchids in promotion when they're out of flowers, but lately they stopped doing that. Yesterday, somehow, they had a discount section back, and this was there for half price since the flowers were gone. I knew what the plant was, so I was really happy to get it for really cheap. On that same garden center, we found this easy plant really, really cheap. And I was really happy because I've been reading everywhere that if you want a house plant that doesn't take a lot of light for those corners of the house that just don't get enough light for a normal house plant, you should get a ZZ plant. And as soon as I became aware of their existence, the prices of them just seemed to shut up everywhere around here. And I remember them costing next to nothing, so I was waiting for a garden center to have them discounted to get one and see if I like keeping them. We got this one for really cheap, and it seems to be in decent condition. But both this plant and the, the other on stadium that was discounted, I'm pretty sure they're riddled with bugs. So these two are definitely getting repotted today as soon as possible so they don't spread it all over the house. And finally, while we were driving next to the beach, we drove by a garden center that we don't go to very often, but we decided to check it just for fun. And he actually picked this plant for me. I, we never had Syngoniums and I was not much aware of their existence other than seeing the name on some articles and some video titles. He picked this one for me because he thought I would love this faded dusty pink and he was absolutely right. I absolutely love this plant. I can't wait to see it grow and thrive because I'm absolutely in love with this color. So this one I'm not going to repot yet because I saw online that they don't like to be repotted very often and you should wait for it to be root bound. And yeah, I'm just going to keep it as a house plant. I'm probably not going to let it vine too much because I like this compact look that it has right now. And I'm really happy. So if you have other tips about Syngoniums too, please let me know. Uh, I can grow orchids pretty decently, but house plants is definitely something that I'm not 
not even close to an expert too. <laughs> the first repot we're gonna start with is the ZZ plant. We can tell this one needs a repot, first of all, because the pot is all deformed. You can't tell on camera, but you can actually feel the rhizome of the plant if you squeeze it. And second of all, because we're pretty sure it has bugs on it. It shows some evidence of well, what might, might have been made by bugs at some point. So that's part of the reason why I'm repotting, so it doesn't get startled by the bugs. <laughs> I always struggle a bit trying to figure out what is the best way to remove the, pl the plant without hurting it. Usually it's a little bit of a squeeze and pull. Oh, well we got roots. <laughs> There's a lot of roots, they look healthy, which is great. And now it's just a matter of loosening up the old media. We can see that these were leaf propagations. I think at this point it's really easy to tell. You can tell the leaf is here and you can tell that there are new plantlets coming out of the leaf. They're very big rhizomes. Okay, this was really easy. It's much easier than orchids. Yeah, oh yeah, it's much easier than orchids. It's a bit messier, but much, much easier. And as you can see, it looks really healthy. The rhizomes are good. The leaves are still attached, nothing is rotting. Perfect. This is the first time I'm seeing what's inside the pot of a ZZ plant and it's adorable. The bulbs, they look just like potatoes. That is cute. Okay, and we're back after struggling to find a pot that would fit the plant and doing our soil mix, which is just regular soil mixed in with some perlite. We mix in the perlite just to allow for better drainage because from what we've been reading she doesn't like to be very wet so the perlite will help drain the water and makes it for a fluffier media that doesn't come back too much. We decided to repot the plant with the new growths facing out. Okay so all the roots are in and now I'm just gonna put in some dirt. As I'm putting in dirt, I will be awkwardly shuffling the pot just to minimize the, the number of air holes. After I put in a couple of layers of soil, I then start rearranging the plants, just to make it look a bit more pleasant than everything too close together in the middle. It is interesting, we have a lot of uh, house plants that are South African plants that do great here and oddly enough at least in my experience I grew up with a lot of people having South African plants in their homes and they, they weren't people who were particularly big on plants it was just the plants you could get coincidentally a lot of them happened to be from South Africa maybe it's the plants that take more <laughs> neglect well <laughs> yeah maybe we're going to put the final layers of just dirt because we think this might be too much perlite. There we go, I think we're done. I can't feel any air holes. The plant isn't wobbling too much. I can't wait to be able to remove these leaves. We thought about removing them, but we didn't because they were really stuck. You know, and we figured if they're that stuck, let them be. And there we go. That's our first repot, the ZZ plant. Next, I'm going to have the pleasure of unpotting an orchid. I really like unpotting orchids. Again, I'm doing this because this one, I'm actually sure it has bugs. We saw a little snail in the store and a centipede. So this one, and I'm sure it has bugs. Of course, they're going to make a liar out of me and they're not going to show up in the video. Good. <laughs> oh, I hate these. They're still the, um, the nursery plug, the sphagnum plug. I'm going to be very gentle. I think 
She mostly has dead roots. I think the, the old roots are all goners. Okay, and my work here is done. And I'm back. Now that the bugs are all dealt with, I can do the tedious job that he hates, which is getting rid of all of these dead roots and repotting it. And he's used to repotting cacti and succulents, which he can do in like half a minute per plant. So doing orchids really does not compare. We usually do repots together and while he does like 10 plants, I maybe do one, not even one if it's like a cattleya. So I'm just gonna clean out all these clearly dead roots that are soft and squishy here in the middle. And here was the tiny original growth. It's still here. I'm gonna remove it though, because I don't think this adds anything to the plant. <laughs> Along with these roots. I used to use scissors for this, but not only did it take longer, I would always accidentally cut roots that were still healthy. So with thin roots like this, they just snap off. It's much easier to just be kind of rough with it and just rip them out. This plant is actually in not in terrible condition. We used to buy a lot of, most of our Oncidium intergenerics came from that garden center because they used to sell a lot of flowering plants to, you know, people who want them just for decoration. And as soon as the plant stopped flowering, they would put it in the discounted section for like one or two euros, three euros, five euros. And since we know what the plants are, and we don't mind that they're not flowering, we, we actually prefer to buy them cheaper, recuperate them at home, and then see them flowering properly. So we would buy a lot of our Oncidium intergenerics from there. Then they just stopped doing that. And a lot of their orchids started getting a lot higher priced. I don't know what the change was. And they stopped receiving as much orchids as they did before. But these ones, I saw them there like a month or, or so ago. And I never seen these titanium treasure type um, oncidiums, but they seem to be like the brasidium type shape, but in a much smaller manageable plant, which I'm really enjoying. And I was interested, but you know, I just, I didn't want to pay a lot for a plant that, first of all, they usually come with bugs. Second of all, it wasn't that reasonably priced at the time. Then they had them back, and now they have them discounted, so we paid very little for these plants. And as you can see, it's reasonably healthy. It's plump, it has new growth, the root system is not great, but it never is with these mass-produced hybrids. So I think this plant is going to do really well, and it was a great find. So now that I cleaned, most of the root system that I could see was obviously dead, and I got some small bark and medium bark, and some recently moistened sphagnum, and a pot, of course. I'm gonna get to potting up this plant. I was saying that I'm really happy that we found this and it was a steel, although I couldn't find, for some reason, I couldn't find the origins of this hybrid. I'm starting to think that uh, the titanium, titanium treasure name is just a commercial name because I couldn't find anything other than other orchid shops and plant shops selling this hybrid. Couldn't find any information on the parentage and they have different colors or different variations of the hybrid. I actually don't know exactly what color this one is because they had one, a darker one and a pinker one. Definitely hoping for the pinker one, but we don't, we technically don't know exactly what color this one is, but they were both pretty. And I'm going to use quite a bit of sphagnum with this plant because if there's one thing I learned this summer is that most of my insidiums are thirsty. I, no matter how much I water them, I've been watering all my plants by soaking twice a week and still midway through between two waterings. They're just dry. I have to spray the top of the medium in between waterings. 
whether they're in a big pot or a small pot. Of course, the small pot suffer more, but they're all thirsty, thirsty plants. This is one of those Oncidium repots where you end up um, potting at a slope because most Oncidium types kind of climb, so the back bulbs are lower than the, the most recent growths. And you end up having to remove these back bulbs because of it if you want to keep it in the pot and not mounted. And I definitely want to keep my Oncidiums in the pot and not mounted because I, if I can barely keep up with the Androbiums and Cattleyas that I have mount, mounted, I don't know how I would keep up with an Oncidium. I tried when I was first starting to grow orchids. I had one of those Oncidium sweet sugar that are famous for growing very slopey. So I decided to, I'm going to mount it, of course, and then I'll water it every day if I have to. Yeah, no, every day was not enough. The plant was always dehydrated in the summer, so I don't think I'll ever grow an Oncidium mounted if I can help it. Well, there you go. I think the plant is going to do great, and I'm really happy I got it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was just an impromptu little repot and showing you the plants we got yesterday, but I hope it was still entertaining. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!